If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, yes. In the intro, we talk about Doug's gift. It's the piggyback writer. Yeah, yeah, I can't oh, wait. Boy, Hooking, is that gonna be Doug fun? Up. Oh my god, super fun. Uh, I talk about men and their underdeveloped glutes. Mm, get your poor shit bastards. To- get your shit together, guys. Yeah. We talk about Adam's girl-like butt again. Uh, we Ooh. might post some pictures of this in the show notes. Sal it's thinks very slappable. About, Sal thinks about this a lot. Yep. Yeah. We talk about the difference between what a centaur is and a minotaur is. Uh, again, I, I'm dropping knowledge. Yeah. It was, <laughs> yeah. If Doug doesn't edit that out. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Uh, we talk about 80s movies and scary movies. And if you had to guess between me, Adam, and Justin, which one of us do you think would be the biggest pussy when it comes to scary movies? You'll find out in the intro. <laughs> Then we get into the questions. <laughs> Zing. <laughs> the first question is, is it better to eat the bulk of your calories early in the day, late in the day, or throughout the day? Or never. Or, or just <laughs> eat all the calories. Exactly. That's what I did. The next question was, uh, this person wants to lift normal, but they can't because of diastasis recti. What is that? Well, that's- Find out. That's- well, yeah, I guess you're going to have to listen to find out. It is not an erectile dysfunction. It's as sexy as it sounds. It's actually quite common, uh, yeah. especially in women who've had children. Uh, then someone asked me what my thoughts are on the new diet. Known they as the, don't give a shit about Justin or I. They're talking about the carnivore <laughs> diet. Yeah. Uh, basically, all it's you okay, do we is have each other, Adam. eat meat. Is it better than veganism? Lastly, we, ask about the, uh, we answer a question uh, about the best way to correct rounded shoulders Especially when you have large for them big titties. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Sorry, I had to. Large breasts. That would be the correct term. Well, uh, if you want to be medical, and also, also, uh, definitely, definitely. I know I've said this before, <laughs> but this is the truth now. This is our. <laughs> this is the truth now. Well, it is. This is our. <laughs> well, you could debate. Well, I'm glad in, you're finally truthful. This is our you biggest could, promotion in terms of well, money biggest wise. or not, it's one of the best for sure. It I is mean. so. We've always had lots of people say, hey, me and my friend want to follow the MAPS program. My fiance. Whatever. So this is our first ever BOGO promotion, buy one, get one promotion. So enroll in the MAPS Super Bundle, which includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Anywhere, and MAPS Prime. It's one year worth of exercise programming. Enroll in that. By the way, it's all discounted massively because it's a bundle. Enroll in that. We'll give you one for free. For anyone, anyone you want, your, any friend, family member, it doesn't matter. You'll get one for free. Buy one, get one free. Wow. It's only going on till July 12th, okay? so this Not is a, a full month. It's not all month long. I'm glad so we have an acronym for that. Bogo. Get your friend and convince them to do That's it great. soon, sooner rather than later. You can find out about this at mindpumpmedia.com. BOGO now. Why are there always songs? About rainbows. <laughs> What's on the other side? All right, Sal, that's enough. I like it when Justin. Uh, I like it when Justin opens. Biggie! Up. You guys just too much. Hey guys. <laughs> oh, come me! Real quick, you know how it was uh, Doug's birthday the other day, and we didn't buy him anything like assholes. Fuck! Right. I got the gift. Why you gotta remind us? I got the gift. You guys ready? Yeah. Watch I, this. I real. gave him the you one. Got that the gift. Giving. Watch this right here. You get the hit. Watch this right here. Look how fucking cool this is right here. Hmm. Listen. Is this cool? What yeah, it is. It's a backpack. It's like a it's backpack. It's a kid pack. It's like a backpack, but your kid stands on it, <laughs> and it's like you're giving him a little piggyback, right? Wow. And now we can finally take Doug. Could you fucking imagine? Can you we, please order one of these? Like, dude, everywhere. Can you please order one? Yeah. I want to carry. I want us to have Doug like that on us. Yeah. <laughs> so that when we're going places, he's filming. He's filming on Adam's he's working. back. working. We're getting extra resistance. Can you send me the link to that? I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Katrina order. Is that a gift yeah. for you or for me? <laughs> That's for you. You don't so want to use anymore. your legs anymore. Yeah, uh, Doug. Doug, you take for granted that we want to carry you, dude. That's fucking awesome. You know how yeah. fun that would be if I could ride on the back of Justin. I want to be carried. I know. Come on, man. I mean, we could run fast. We could jump. I get a and lot bounce. of emails, and so I fun. turn them all away. Yeah. Could you send me the link, please? I'm sending you the link right okay. now. Mm. Think about all the activities we could do, Doug. All the activities. It's way more comfortable than the baby Bjorn. Mm. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. You know what I'm That's saying? That's true. Because yeah. then, st- then, then you could burp him. Yeah. <laughs> he had too much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's okay, Doug. So you're telling me someone made fun of my shorts in the YouTube video, huh? 
<laughs> Your dad shorts. Wait, which, the, the plaid yeah, you know, wait, special which, from wait, 1992. Wait, which video was it? I had those in high school still, so it was like 97. Oh, yeah. Hold 97, on. Oh, 97. 97. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's still fair. Nine. They were still uh, good in 97. You know what? That's fair. Which let's, video? Let's, let's be accurate. Which video? Uh, The most recent oh, one. Oh, was it the movement versus muscle Yes, video? the movement versus muscle Those shorts versus, are fucking great, dude. Yeah, yeah, they're great. I, I like them. Like, oh, I get I, compliments. I Gots chocks? I, I had lots of Oshkosh Pagosh. Oshkosh Pagosh. <laughs> Is that what they uh, are? Are those Oshkosh Pagosh? No, be. I think they were. Are you uh, bringing back Oshkosh Pagosh? Oshkosh Pagosh, no, my God. No. <laughs> are you bringing it back? No, I think they were um, Cavricci. Yeah. No, I'm, sure, I'm just kidding. I'm Whoa, trying to use, I'm trying to use another name That's of, like of a, a brand. I think, they like were, a I think they were Bugle Boys. Bugle Boys. Yeah, they were Bugle Boys. Oh, they match. They, they, they matched my Bugle Boys or Oshkosh Pagosh. They yeah. match my LA gears. <laughs> LA gear. my, my British Stussy. My BK yeah. Knights. My is British Stussy Knights. still a brand or like Dude, no, no fear? Bro, Stussy is has made a hard comeback. Really? No, no. Stussy is Ooh. alive and well right now. They were like the thing for Which, a minute. Actually, now that you bring that up, that was one of those things I've been meaning to look into the company because I was telling Katrina I was fascinated that it made like it. They survived. Well, yeah, they, they kind of like uh, fell off. You mm-hmm. didn't hear anything from them for like 10 years. And now it's popular again, and it's in a lot of your, you know, s- skater type stores, like right. They're like uh, Mainland or yeah. uh, Pacific Sunwear, Carry Stussy now, hmm. and it, it they really didn't revamp the brand. It looks exactly the same it used to look when I was a kid, and we used oh, to really? write the S like, and the T and the two I's. Like, shit, we still have a lot of inventory. Maybe a decade mm-hmm. later, it'll make sense. Yeah, right? no, I, I'm interested. In, you know, I always I'm always fascinated by a company that survives, uh, especially stuff like things like apparel. To stay, to stay, uh, um, I mean, popular, relevant. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the word you, you really have for. to sell. Thank, it. thank you, relevant. <laughs> <laughs> to stay relevant uh, for that long. Sell our local thesaurus. Thank you. <laughs> like it was a really tough. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling. It's all thesaurus it's all strikes the again. Hey, yeah. all I'm going to do this whole episode is what you, right when you're about to say a word, I'm going to say what I think you should say. <laughs> what I should say. Yeah. <laughs> Just pop them in there. But yeah. no, that, that type of stuff. Finishers. I, I don't know if you guys pay attention to that. I pay attention to that oh, stuff. Oh, totally. It, it fascinates me when I see that, and, I, and it always makes me go, I'm interested to know who the CEO was over the last 10 years, or if there was multiple, how they pivoted the company to keep it going. Right, like LEDs in, in shoes and all that. Kind of, like that, that was a thing for a minute, and it's coming back, and you know, I'm waiting for the pumps to come back. Back and all that kind of stuff, like Reebok did. And- well, they did. They actually, they, they Reebok pump did come back. They did a little. Uh, they did a. They did a line. Just for like a minute. I went on trying to find the originals, and I couldn't. Man, uh, those, for the, are, those are the. Jam, I was dude. on the hunt for the original, original pump. Except I had Jordans. You so. know, when I was a kid, you know what shoes I wanted really fucking bad, like really bad, hmm. ninja shoes. I wanted no. ninja shoes so bad. <laughs> You're such a dork. You know about? Because, because you, you I, used to, I used to beat on, up. Man. I used to beat up kids like you. No, no, no ninja I want. You wouldn't have been able to beat me up because I'm an actual ninja. Yeah. Because you know, like the one toe comes out uh, like that, yeah. but then there's like a knife that comes out the bottom. You played a lot of Shinobi. You know what huh? I mean? So <laughs> what's Shinobi? <laughs> Come that, on, man. Ninja that's Gaiden. A video, video game. Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, Ninja Gaiden ninja. too. But so anyway, check this out. Shinobi. I had a, I had an interesting realization the other day. So my girlfriend was commenting on the. Uh, rotundness of my glutes, the roundness, wow. and it was a very nice compliment. Yeah, and uh, I, I was like, my butt's not that like great. Right? Like, what are you talking about? Because I look at it sometimes. Oh, it's totally fishing for compliments. And she's right like, there. and she's like, no, totally fishing for compliments. <laughs> and right she's there. like, no, nah, it's, honey, it's, it's not that. Wait, 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 let me let me do his posture right here. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, oh, what, about? what this whole this, thing? This thing? Yeah. This whole thing? Oh, you're silly. This whole thing? No, you I, are wait. silly. I know because because yeah. I have this I have the self image issue because I'm always around Justin and his glutes. Are <laughs> Are wow. over overpowered. You could fit Dude. both of my glutes in one of his glutes. Yeah, well, you know what I'm just, saying. It's just mass. It's, you know, it's, not, it's not like a whole lot they're, of shape. They're th- it's yeah. they're they're <laughs> thick <laughs> and they're cakes. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. that's not the it's story. Like a so, semi truck. So know, she's complimenting a... me, and I'm like, "What's the big deal?" And she goes, "Most guys have no butts." And I'm like, "That's not true." And she says, "Yes." And I'm like, "Wow, mm. you know what? Women get a lot of heat for their butt." Guys, do they have real glutes? So then I'm at the gym. I'm in the locker room. She's staring like, at guys' butts. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> Bro, you don't got glutes, man. Dude, have you... Do this for me. Next time you go in the locker room, look at naked dudes' butts. Okay. Okay, don't get, this is already getting to be bad, bad advice. advice. Just yeah. from a personal trainer standpoint. Right. She was right. Stare. Every dude in there had zero glutes. It was all flabby booties. There was no ass. Flabby booties. Nothing. 
Wow. And I realize that that's the most under, probably the most undeveloped thing on on guys today. Well, I think you could argue that the whole posterior chain is on guys because we don't guys don't. You don't see a lot of impressive backs. Yeah, either. you don't see a lot of impressive backs. You don't see a lot of impressive glutes because not a lot of guys deadlift and squat. Right. Although that's changed a lot. I think that I didn't see any. <laughs> in my research, but there was one guy. There is one. We're in the Silicon Valley. Well, there you, is one. You're older. also you're also in a gym that yeah. I think is still. Uh, you're right. It wasn't Golds. Yeah. If you're in if you're in Golds where guys there, guys are deadlifting and squatting, yeah. you're, you're gonna see some impressive glutes. Now you're talking about some glutes. You're gonna right. see some scar yeah. tissue from the needles. But now I was yeah. at a. <laughs> there was this uh, older man though that was uh, <clears throat> this Persian guy, older man, probably in his fifties or sixties. Like big and strided glutes, so I noticed it. So I'm like, I'm gonna wait till he's dressed because I'm gonna ask him. Harry, what... like, uh, yeah, that's racist. So he no. he got dressed, and uh, when he was done getting dressed, I went up to him. I'm like, hey man, I'm like, you look really developed. Like lower body looks real developed. I didn't tell him he had nice glutes because I figured that would be inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he was a sprinter. He probably would appreciated uh, it. He was a sprinter in high school and in college. So there you go. Oh. That's why his glutes were uh, big and strided. Do you think it more? Do you, do you think more fire. often than not, like a like a situation like that where the he's a sprinter and therefore he has these big glutes from sprinting, or he genetically had the bigger glutes and therefore he was a good sprinter? Mm. Both. Yeah, but I think there's both. Selective. I think there, of course, both. But what do you think is what do you think is more of the case? Well, so he still because I have my own. So he still that. sprints and he still does lots of leg exercises. That we talked a little bit. It's that fast so twitch because movement. because glutes are a muscle, you can definitely genetically have bigger muscles. But they can also atrophy and hypertrophy. So, and his were, I mean, I did get a good look. Yeah. They were well developed. They <laughs> I were, took a picture. They looked like uh, they looked like very muscular. Like you could tell the guy does exercises. I mean, they weren't like Justin's. Thank you. Um, and then like yeah. Adam's got a girl mine, butt. Mine, which is, mine weird. is the standard. I don't yeah. know if that's a compliment you, or not. You have a girl butt. Uh, yeah, that's not that one th- time we both mooned Justin. He's, he's got the hypertrophy, and he butt. took a picture. Yeah. I was like, dude, if I didn't see the rest of you, that would look like a girl's butt, <laughs> right, Justin? I have a fantastic I think, butt. It's like it's, <laughs> I think it's just the way his posturing. Justin it, tells you know? me he all had the time, that kind of little nice little arch. You it, know? It's like a girl's yeah. booty. You know what I mean? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I don't think. You or Justin would be safe in prison. It's very plump. You, you know say I mean? girls' booty. Is it like a? Uh, there's lots of girls. That's too over. What does it mean to have like have a girl's booty? So like, it's, it's more like, like a, I've seen more like a girl, sweet peach. I've seen lots of girls <laughs> with all types of booty. Yeah. So what what is it? Describe yeah. my booty, please. It's like uh, I'm like trying to think now. It, Tell me. I'm trying to um, think now in my head what it, it looks look like. like. A piece of fruit. It's um, don't act like you don't think about it all the time. No, so I don't. Go ahead. Tell me. If first of all, it's really white and smooth. Yeah. No, it's yes, it is, bro. It's got a trail of tears. It's really. <laughs> and and it's, you say a trail it's almost like it's I heavier. Wish I didn't. It's almost heavier at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Like the weight disp- distribution is it's yeah. bottomish. Yeah, so it like, it's very peach like. Yeah, yeah, like a girl's it, butt. It bedonks at yeah, the bottom. It's, it's, it's I'm telling yeah. you, if we were if we is were, it, uh, is it full or is it like? No, but it's. Do you feel? Do you feel like it's, it's not like oh. like when you look at it? Do you initially have this idea? Hit like that you and you realize slap it's mine it, it kind of like, just whoa, 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 whoa. Let's say yeah, we turned all the little, lights off. Let's say we turn the lights little off. Little vibration factor, and and you had to like guess what's in your hand. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, that's a girl's butt, and then they turn <laughs> the lights on, be like, oh my god, it's Adam. It's like the cup lift. Yeah, like that. Yeah, but uh, right. it's, I mean, it's not it, it's not anywhere near. Like, don't get me wrong, Adam. Hmm. It's nowhere near Justin's. Thank you. But it's <laughs> like, definitely again, yeah, it's definitely good. You know, so Justin has like a. Powerful looking horse <laughs> ass. Yeah, he's like a horse ass. Like when I see his ass, like a big horse. Like a horse. Ass. How dare it, you? It just like if you had to make a song for his butt. Yeah, right now. I even I, like. Doom, 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 I've been doom, meaning. Doom. To, you know what? I screenshot. We boom. had a YouTube. We had a YouTube video where Justin was wearing tapered pants. Oh, yeah. And he had his he had his hips kicked <laughs> yeah, out. And I, right. I, I actually screen captured it because I was meaning to fuck with him and put a horse head on on him and then yeah. send it to him because literally from the hips down or waist down he looked like a like a, a, a horse. <laughs> Stands. Yeah. What do they call that mythical creature? A minotaur. Oh, yeah, I'm minotaur? a minotaur. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that a little bit. Mm-hmm. You are very minotaur. Or a centaur. Uh, no, because minotaur is the bull. Oh, Come what's on, a centaur? Yeah. I fucked up. It's You're in your right. Area. Yeah. Damn it. Whoa. <laughs> Doug has it on recording. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'll edit it out. Hey, Doug, edit it. <laughs> Sometimes he's smart. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's I help edit, him a lot. He edits actually. out all the yeah. ones yeah. where I help right. him a lot, all especially with the mythical stuff. All the smart shit. That's like my area. All the smart shit Justin says is edited out. Every time, dude. And then right after I say it, like it's my idea. Wow, we don't really hear you say much hey, you guys, on the show. By the way, by the way, uh, 
by the way, guys, it conflicts with Sal's ideology. Yeah. A, so. cent- a centaur is a half man, half horse. Uh, Minotaur is half, yeah. <laughs> half man, yeah, half actually. bull. Just in case you guys didn't know that. <laughs> I watched Legend. And you, oh god, what a great movie! What right, dude? One of my favorites. What a great time. movie. Speaking of great movies, uh, I don't, did I t- say this on the show that I made my girlfriend watch The Lost Boys? Did yeah, I tell you guys? No, this? you told me that out in the gym. Yeah. So we're sitting there, and I'm like, another we, great. I'm like, movie. what are we gonna watch? Right, and iconic. We had talked about how she liked the movie Twilight, the first one, mm-hmm. which I, I'll agree. It was an okay movie, but it's, Michael! Not, it's not how I depict vampire. Like my understanding of vampires is based on when I watched when I was a kid, which was the Lost Boys. And those are fucking vampires, dude. They're yeah, freaking man. awesome, right? Yeah. They're like bloodthirsty. So, so I'm like, I'm like, babe, you, we need to watch this movie. Like, please watch this movie. I was like, so like I hammered her. Like, we're going to watch this movie. It's awesome. I built up. The, I freaking hyped it up. Yeah. She didn't like it. What? Yeah, she didn't like it. And, well, and when it, I watched in it, her defense, especially it's like, kind of like when you were like, "Yeah, Rad, stupid." Like me and Adam were like, "What?" Yeah, okay. no, no, Rad, stupid. How, how dare Rad you. is stupid though. That's, oh, that's, no, that's, that's just because different. you can't ride a bike. That's Shame a on you. Yeah, yeah. Shame on you. You could ride a, if you could ride a bike, dude. Yeah. It would be cool. Yeah. What would you, you guys, could actually bunny hop? What would you, you know guys I mean? do if I couldn't ride a bike? How funny would that be? I, I, I do want to ride bikes. Like this makes sense. I saw this coming. Yeah, right. <laughs> Not surprised right now uh, at all. Actually, uh, actually, if you got on a bike and started doing tricks, I'd be like, "What? I know. What? My hair would <laughs> fall off." Like so. So anyway, it was like when you made that shot when we were playing basketball. I know. What is going on? He saves it. all. The world is flat. I'm telling you, all of his talent, he saves for just like one moment of hope. When counts when it counts so so what i was gonna say is i watched lost boys with her and i hadn't seen it for years and it, it is an awesome movie but it's also kind of cheesy you know mm. so you know those movies you watch when you're in the kid? 80s you know yeah, exactly I mean? so i can kind of see that so i'm thinking legend was fucking epic but i wonder if it's cheesy too well yeah. it's really tough it's Did really you watch legend yeah it's really tough. That demon dude with the fucking yeah, horn, the horn, man. Yeah. It was, it, it, it's cheesy. If that's you watch how it. I want to dress. If I go, if we go to Burning Man, by the I mean, way, that's that's like the costume. Huge, dude. I'm like, gonna have your head. Your neck's gonna hurt. That's what, I don't yeah. care. It looks. Yeah. It's when you go back and you. I, I own it, so I've gone back and watched it. And I probably I don't know five years ago, whatever. But it's literally uh, the movies that were done back then. Even if it was a good storyline, it's tough to watch it because we've been spoiled yeah. with this. Super high def, incredible quality. It's when like puppets dominated. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was like all about the puppets and Jim yeah. Henson. Like, Although I, like in all I, those movies. I do believe you will see this. Like we we did see the that comeback with like vinyl records, right? Like so we went so far with music because the nostalgia factor. Yes. Yeah, so I do mm. I do feel it like does sound better claymation monsters. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know I do feel like uh, and we talked about this one time before on on the podcast about. TVs have become so clear now that it, it ruins some movies because I can see the makeup on the men. I can tell the props are fake. Like so, yes. When you can see that, it kind of it kind of loses its luster, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. The demon from Legend. Yeah, he looks pretty bad. Doug just pulled it up. Like <clears throat> that looks like a demon that will kill you and then and then bang your girl. Like the For same, sure. all at the same With time. This massive red, you know. <laughs> it's red. <laughs> red. It's red. He's just. <laughs> Oh my God! I mean, look at him. He's, that's a, that's that, aggressive. That's as a arousing. kid, that movie scared the shit oh, out of me. Did it really? Oh yeah. yeah. I was so you, scared to death so you know what's another great movie uh, that's from back then? Krull. Did you guys ever watch Krull? No. no but it, oh no! no. Doug, look it up. K R U L L. So awesome, dude! It's such a great movie. He finds it's like this. Is it another demonic movie you watched? It's kind of like that. Wow, he finds it. Oh, there it is. You're such a, twi- oh, you're a dark, you're twisted, such a twisted goth kid. No, fuck, man. No, look you're at this. Mo- kid. Look at this movie right Explain here. Explain so much. Whoa. This. It's look at the demon in that. Anyway, he finds this like ninja star thing that he kills the demon with. Like he throws it at the oh, demon. That thing is crazy. And it spins and it fucking. That movie. Oh, look, I'm watching this. If you're into like 80s sci-fi. Yeah. Oh, uh, Kroll is, I promise you will love this movie. There's a Cyclops in it. How did I not know about this? Dude, it will change your life. Dude. I can't believe you've never seen who's it. Who's the main actor? Who's like that guy? Jason and the Argonauts. Who is that? J- oh, oh, my God. Oh, what a great movie. Who's, who's the main actor? Right I don't there? know what his name is, but. I, I mean, know. Click on his picture. Down. So it's this weird dystopian, like, future or past. You can't really figure it out. And he's like a king, and there's this, it's this demon, like, that controls these bad people, and they come and steal his wife, and then he kills the demon with this ninja star thing. It's really cool. It's a great yeah, movie. Back when Ninja Stars wow, were like I have, the, I don't, the I, shit. 1983. Well, wow. no wonder. I was two. Yeah, it was a great <laughs> I was like, I don't remember this at all. Yeah. Mm. You shouldn't have watched that if you were two, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I'd be scared. I'd probably be scared of a movie like that. Yeah. It only got a 6.1. What movies, when you were a kid, scared you? 
Do you remember a movie that fucked you Le- up? Legend was. Yeah. Legend scared yeah, yeah, the Yeah, yeah. Legend. Mm. Legend scared me. Uh, You're a pussy, though. You know what other one scared me? That- God. What was the name of this? This is gonna drive me crazy. Uh, <laughs> Ghoulies. The Exorcist scared the shit out of me. Well, that's of course. Yeah. Yeah, well, of I course watched it when scary. I was young. Yeah. What's the What's the other one where uh, she looks at the She's looking at she touches the Phantasm? TV. Phantasm. No, no. She's looking at the TV. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, 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 Poltergeist. Poltergeist. Yeah. yeah, Poltergeist. Justin, ten points. Yeah. Scared Thank me you. for uh, scared the shit out of me as a kid. You know what scared me so bad, like that it actually traumatized me. Hmm. No joke. And I was a young kid too. I was very, very young, and I watched my first. Black and white Twilight Zone episode. And the Twilight oh, Zone there's some creepy is Twilight legit Zones. creepy, even yeah. as an adult. And the episode that I watched that scared the shit out of me is the one where the doctors are like, there's a woman and her face is covered in bandages, so you can't see her face. And she's uh-huh. like talking about like, oh my God, I hope the surgery worked. Like I don't want to be I don't want to be hideous anymore. And the doctor's like, I think we did a good job this time. I think we're gonna we fixed your face. And she's like, I just don't want children to cry when they see me. So you're thinking like you're like, oh man, this woman's like really ugly. Yeah. So then towards the end, and you by the way, the whole time you never see the faces of the nurses or the doctor. All you see is her. So it's all her, and you see their hands like talking and stuff. Yeah. Then they start taking the bandage off, and you're expecting this like hideous like person. Yeah. And she's this beautiful woman. But as soon as her face is shown, the nurse drops like a beaker or something and crashes and everybody goes, oh my God. And the doctor's like, it didn't work. And then the camera pans over the doctor and the nurses and they're they're all all fucking monsters. Ah. And it scared me so bad (laughs) that all anybody ever had to do to make me cry was do the song from the Twilight Zone. All they had to do, (laughs) that's it. Bro, this is- All they had to do was do the song. This is embarrassing because it's such a cheesy movie, right? It's it's (laughs) Ghostbusters, right? Like it's like, duh, you know, it's like fake- but when when the um, when the dogs started like breaking out of the statues, oh yeah, like that freaked me the fuck out. Like I just couldn't even watch the rest of the movie after that. And then the red eyes. And then I remember that my brother would play that record like on ding, 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 and, ding, and I'd scared the shit out of me. And I and I would like get I'd get in fights with them all the time. How crazy is yeah. that? You would have, and people didn't even have to play the song though. They'd literally go up to me and go do 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 with the stupid twilight song, <laughs> and I'd be like stop, and I'd cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck man. I was like 16. Mm, yeah. Just kidding. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like last year. Yeah. 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 I don't even, I don't own, I have a big old DVD collection and I don't think I own any scary movies. Oh, I, but really? you don't like them still. I don't. They get you, they yeah, get you just anxiety. Like Courtney. Yeah, she hates it gives them. me anxiety. I, I used to like them. And I've, you know. Really? I, You're that serious as a man, as a grown man? As a grown man. You I'm, watch a scary movie, you get anxiety. My favorite are the yes. funny ones like Evil Dead and, uh, you know, like Army of Darkness and yeah. shit like that. Oh, yeah, those are cool. Yeah. But yeah. I, I want to hear more about Adam being a yeah, pussy. Yeah, yeah. So, Let's, like, why? So you're an adult male. Let's it, talk about this for a second. You're yeah. how tall are you? 6'3". Mm. You're 6'3", <laughs> lift weights. Got how much you weigh? 220 yeah. pounds. Yeah, tattoos yeah, and right. shit. Tattoos. Fuck, tattoos. Mean as fuck. Mean yeah. as fuck. Sometimes painted toenails. And and you won't watch a scary movie. I won't watch a scary movie. Scary movie, and the only times I ever did was like my buddies, like when we were in high school and even in college. Like they would, uh, they loved to watch us. They used to, like I get outnumbered. There's four of us, right? Four really close friends, and they all love to watch them. And they love to watch them just because they like to watch me squirm while we watch it. And I used to hate it. I'm like, <laughs> I can't get comfortable watching this. I'm not being entertained right now. I'm on edge, wondering what the fuck's gonna happen next. I'm oh, looking at his man. eyes right now. He's like squinting. Like, yeah, yeah, oh, that's, God, that's God. How I, I watch yeah. it like that. It's like yeah, this, like. <laughs> And then I, and I like sweating like and I'm like I don't get this when I want to watch at least how and I'm a big movie buff guy right so I love movies I watch movies all or the time. you're a buff movie guy <laughs> one or the other right Sorry. so I love to watch movies but movie time for me is like this I want to be entertained I don't want to have to really think I want to just be absorbed by the movie and I want to relax and scary movies are the opposite. I cannot relax. I fucking love them. No, oh, dude. Remember, I love scary remember movies. in the mouth of madness. No. Oh, that movie was scary. Oh, there's this part where this like freaky old man was like riding a bike like in the distance. What? what? <laughs> and then it was like this car was driving. It was dark and like this the, the headlights kept like flickering and then like all of a sudden you know like. He was like way far in the distance. Then all of a sudden, boom! He's like right in front of the car. I was oh. like, ah! "Oh my god! Oh my god!" I jumped out of my seat. I dude. love scary it's movies. Up. except I will not watch a Rob Zombie movie. Those are the only ones I won't because they're too fucking goes oh, too far. Just gory. He goes too far. Yeah. There's no reason why. What do you think like of that. stuff like Saw? Then Saw was it was okay. I wasn't that impressed with it. To be honest with you, yeah. I like scary movies that I it's can't teeny bopper that I can't figure out that legit get me. Feeling scared. A little Psychological. Did you watch? Was, did you right? watch Saw in the theater? Or did you watch Saw at home? Theater. I liked the first one. The I first Saw good. I saw in theater, and when he's taking photos in in the dark, 
and he's mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you and you know that fucking clown, you know like, whatever the yeah. hell that thing is, right? You know he's in there, and, and like each time it flashes, you get to see for a second. The whole theater, like I've never been in a, a, a theater like where everybody screamed like at the top of their lungs at the same time. It was the craziest. It was the craziest thing ever when he uh, flashes dude. and it's like right in front of his yeah. face. There, you, I you, right. thought that 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 feeling, like, how does that not make you feel anxious? Like uh, that's that, the excitement. Well, that's why you have to like go to a movie theaters because then you get all the reactions no, of everybody. No, what I like what I like to do is I'll watch it at home with the lights off. Watch that shit by well, myself. You're a real freak. Oh, yeah. I lo- when I was a kid, you know what one of my favorite uh, TV shows was? Because it used to scare the fuck out of me. And then I couldn't sleep, but I would watch it anyway because I loved it. Hmm. Unsolved Mysteries. Remember that? Oh, yeah. That like shit those, would come on. And there was always, show. it was always like a murder that wasn't solved. And that didn't really scare me. Or so. But then they'd always throw in some like alien or ghost shit in there. Yeah. Like the, the house is hunted and they'd show ghost shit. And I'd be like, oh, then I wouldn't be able to sleep. But I loved it. That's mm-hmm. that's so backwards to me. No, it's not. Oh, I loved it. it. I couldn't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> like I actually like to sleep. Yeah. Well, yeah. Scary bird. Bird. Today's quaw is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking Qua. The eagle has landed. Qua. First up is Bree Hicks 5. Is it better to eat the bulk of your calories early in the day, late in the day, or throughout the day? Uh, so first things first, uh, here's order of importance, uh, calories, macros, quality of food, personal preference, and then, uh, I don't know, some other stuff. And then time of day yeah. that you eat your food. Maybe like five of the things. I'm just, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not that important. It really isn't. But let's say you're one of these like highly tuned in, Everything is dialed perfect, like you're Ben Greenfield, like you're doing everything to maximize your performance. Then when you and then when you eat your calories depends on when you're going to work out. Um, and uh, one thing is for sure, some some science is suggesting, and it's not conclusive, but a lot of it's coming out, and it's all pointing in the same direction, that it's better uh, for everything from fat loss to muscle building to hormone p- profiles to eat within a window of about eight hours. So um, it's just, they actually did some some mouse studies, no joke, where they had them eat the same amount of calories. And this is not, it's an animal study again, so it's not human. And they had them eat the bulk of their calories, uh, or they had them eat all their calories within a particular time frame, or they let the mice eat the same amount of food spread out throughout the whole day. When the mice ate it within a restricted time frame, they actually built more muscle and burn more body fat, and it was the same amount of calories. Mm. So it's pretty pretty interesting. Now, there is some science to show that eating during the day uh, is probably better than eating at night. Now, the reason why I may agree with this a little bit, and again, it's probably such a, it's a, small, such a small effect, it doesn't really matter, but the, way, the reason why I may agree with this is from an evolutionary standpoint, it kind of makes sense that we're going to do most of everything during daylight, and when it's dark, we're in the cave and we're sleeping or something like that. You know what I mean? We're not necessarily cooking food and foraging for things because at night, at night we become food. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I have, um, a, I have a theory on this. This is more theories. I You're like know. a theoretical mm. person today. <laughs> <laughs> I have a theory on this. Uh, I think that it would be ideal to actually change this up intermittently. I think that if you eat a bulk of your calories in the morning, most of the time, I think it would be a great idea to fast in the morning and then go bulk at night. And then if you're somebody who eats the bulk of your calories at night most of the time, then I think it would be great to flip it on its head and do it in the morning sometimes. I think that uh, we talk a lot about uh, what we've learned about the body and how it responds to stress, right? And I think the same rules will apply with nutrition too. Like why not stress your body with, okay, it's very, it's used to getting all its calories and its nutrients at this time. I think it would be a good smart idea for us to actually take it away from the body for a little bit at that time and then give it at a different time when it's not ready for it. Yeah. Um, 
and I, I, I don't have any studies to prove that, but this is how I eat. If you watch uh, what's going on in my story, you'll see one day I'll have 400 grams of carbohydrates. Then all of a sudden I'll have 100 grams of carbs. My fats will go all, all up and down. Then you'll see I'll have a huge breakfast and then I'll have a small dinner. But then all of a sudden I'll have a huge dinner and I'll have a small breakfast or I'll fast one day and eat a bulk of them in the window like Sal was saying. I, I, I think it would be good to actually... Uh, change that. Yeah, I definitely I, think experimenting with that is a good idea because mm-hmm. I mean it's for me. I I look at it as like um, you know how how are you like managing your energy? Like what? How do you respond best? Do you respond best? You know when you eat later in the day and, and like you, you're more energetic and productive, uh, restrictive, or you know are you more productive and energetic? by you know eating first thing in the morning and the bulk of your calories in the morning like everybody is different there's variances all, all across the board so mm-hmm. uh you find that out you find out how your body responds best um and, and how you you know best digest and how you best operate throughout the day and then yeah like do what adam says like eventually you challenge yourself on that same pattern yeah i actually I, you know i don't really disagree with you adam i think if that's a principle you can kind of apply to everything right and again, from an evolutionary standpoint, I also don't think humans were very picky uh, with when they ate. I think they ate when they had it. And right. They, yeah. and right. They, if they made a kill at six a.m. or they made a kill at ten o'clock at night, yeah. I don't think about it. Yeah, and I don't this, think this is a new problem. And for I don't. Us. I, and I think they ate it when they had it, and they were, didn't have an ability to really store it. You know, so it's not like you're like, hey, mom, can you put the elk in the freezer because <laughs> you know I don't, don't want to eat it. It's, uh, it's nighttime. I want to wait till tomorrow. It's like you better eat that shit before it has maggots in it. So eat it right now, you know. Yeah. So I would, I, I think I would agree with you, and that's why I think there's evidence to show that either way can be beneficial. I mean, personally, I have less energy if I eat a big meal in the day. I, it doesn't really work for me, um, and I know a lot of people like that. And you know, the truth is, when you eat, you do activate uh, the parasympathetic system of the body, which is the sleep, relax, and rest system of the body. It is not the energy hyper want to move, you know, sympathetic system. And this is true. I mean, think about it. Look, when you eat a massive meal, you know, you probably want to take a nap afterwards. The last thing on my mind when I eat a very big meal is right afterwards, I want to go do some hard activity or I want to study real hard or write a blog or something like that. So that's, you know, that could point to that. It may be better to eat at night, but then on the, on the flip side, again, you know, eating during the day, some studies show that it's, it's so hard to test this thing which is why what we really have that's dependable are animal studies because there's so many factors uh, to consider when, and one thing you want to understand, when we look at studies re- revolved around food with humans, they're almost all uh, surveys, every mm-hmm. single one of them surveys because it's super expensive and not very realistic to take a hundred test subjects of humans, lock them in a laboratory and then completely control their food and the timing and their water. But and do that, that for 10 years. Yeah. So and it's valid. Exactly. And then you got to do it over a long period of time. It's not going to happen. So what they do instead is they do surveys. And so some studies, for example, show that people who eat a balanced breakfast uh, tend to be leaner and healthier. But there's a lot of self-selection bias there because people who tend to take the time out right, to, do to that. eat breakfast uh, also tend to be health conscious. The same thing is like multivitamins. This is a great one. Like studies will show... Uh, yeah. Taking a multivitamin, you know, means you're healthier. Well, people who tend to take supplements also tend Are to be seeking health healthy options. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's a kind of a tough one. Really, the the bottom 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 line here is eat at the time of day that works best for you. That's all. Uh, that'll that'll give you the best you results. Know, yes and no, right there. And, and I want to that I want to say because I feel like there's two there's two camps in this. Right? There's either, uh, and I remember being a trainer. That was what my advice would be. Okay. If you feel that, you know, eating in the morning gives you the the best amount of energy, the best workout throughout the day, then that's what you should do and vice versa if it's at nighttime. And then you have the other camps of I'm a performance athlete and I need to try and time my meal to make sure I get the most optimal or I'm I'm at my peak, right, when I'm hitting a, you know, whatever my sport is, right? But I still think that there's lots of benefits. So because I was, I remember, and this really hit me, when I started to incorporate fasting because I thought that there's no way I could work out without, I used to have to eat at least two meals before I worked out. Like that was my, for years, 
I used to tell clients, well, eat what works for you, just like what Sal just said right now. And what worked for me for many years was in the morning, I had my, my big breakfast, then I had another meal, then about one or two in the afternoon, I was ready to lift. And I got great lifts that way for many years. And I stuck to that forever. And then if I were to ever go out of that a little bit, oh, my workout suffered. But what I found with fasting and I started when I started to do that, yeah, it, it was challenging. And then it then all of a sudden my I felt my body get adapted to it. And then I actually felt better on my workouts. And the takeaway that I got from that more than, oh, fasting does all these wonderful things for me was that, oh, wow, maybe actually what's really good for my body is to challenge it, is to this is what I'm comfortable with doing all the time. Maybe what I should do is actually be out of that for if that is if I don't if I don't have to perform right I mean if you're an athlete this is totally different because you don't want to be like getting ready for your a big game on on Thursday It'll be 48 hour fast y- yeah and all of a sudden like testing like this theory that I have right now which is hey I always eat this way I should not know that's not going to really benefit well, you because yeah, you're, you're trying to perform better but as far as challenging the metabolism I think it's actually really good for us to take yourself outside of your comfort it, it, zone. I mean, it absolutely may. I can I can definitely see the uh, the logic behind it. However, the average person, that's the last thing I tell them to do. You know what right, I'm right. If you, I mean, if you're having a hard time motivating yourself to even work out, the last thing, the, the your last well, thing you need to be doing is getting minimum. consistency is everything. Yeah, right. and I, that's why I say that because. I feel like if you tell people like eat at this time and try this and try that, and then they're like, I'm not doing any of it. It's too much stuff. Um, it's not that important. It really isn't. But if you got everything dialed, uh, play with it a little bit. I mean, I, I don't really disagree with Adam. I think it's a very valid uh, theory. I think there's some logic behind it. And um, it'd be interesting to get some feedback from people who try it out. Play with it a little. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com. Put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com. Put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite. Put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Next up, Jackie Mann, 1078. Wants to lift normal, but feels like she can't because of her diastasis recti. What ab exercises do you recommend? Now, I had to look this up because I didn't even know that was the name of this. Yeah, diastasis recti. So this is when, so this can happen in anybody. Um, It's it's And you actually sometimes see this in young children. Uh, You see this in, however, most people who have this are women. Uh, and they get it when they're pregnant. And what or, happens, big, or big, ginormous bodybuilders. With their, yeah, with their oh, growth hormone guts. Gut. Yeah. yeah. So what happens is, uh, so if you, if you can close your eyes and picture the abdominal, uh, the abdominal uh, muscles, the abdominal muscles, it looks like two rows of muscles, right? Your six pack, you've got two sides to it. And the, uh, your, if your insides are growing really fast, like a woman who's pregnant, they're going to or push- Or a bodybuilder on growth hormone. Or, yeah, exactly. It's going to push those abs out, and sometimes to make room, the abdominals actually split down the middle to make room for this growing uh, baby, and that is called diastasis uh, recti. And you'll know this one of the one of the tests that they do with with people is they'll have them do like try to pretend to do a sit up, and they'll see this big kind of coning bulge come out the minute the middle of their stomach mm. because their their abdominal uh, muscles have gone to the sides, and they'll mm-hmm. see this bulge in the center. This can be a problem. Is that intestine? Um, no, there's muscles underneath too, mm. so it's not a it's not a hernia. Right. But um, it, some people don't like the way it looks, and you know all these different things. Really, this is a problem when because not necessarily, although it can cause problems themselves, and you can get it. You know, some people get surgery for this. Uh, really, the main problem that comes from this isn't necessarily the dividing of the abdominals. It's really the atrophy of the transverse abdominal muscles underneath Mm -hmm. those are that's like the body's natural weight belt so it's a it's a muscle that comes around your waist and when you flex it you squeeze your midsection in so it's like if you're at the beach and you suck in your stomach because you want to look lean that's a transverse abdominus that's that's that muscle that muscle atrophies tremendously when you have a baby because it has to it stretches out it can't stay tight and strong and you can't activate it very well when you're pregnant so it atrophies, it becomes very weak. So now you have your baby, you've got diastasis recti, but what you what the bigger problem is, you've got this really weak 
atrophied, uh, super important core stabilizer muscle called the transverse abdominis. And what you need to do is work on that, not necessarily f- try to focus on bringing the abs together. Although, if you do well, go to the, a physical therapist, that's the, what they'll have you do. The TVA is a, is a group of muscles, right? It's a, it's a, the transverse abdominis is a group of 28 different muscles. That, that, all, that, all the muscles that kind of surround and squeeze in the midsection. Yeah, so a lot of... So the, the advice would be like work in than out, right? So it'd be work a lot of core stuff, a lot of stabilization type stuff, like doing things like that that are going to strengthen you from the inside out before you would start to work abdominals. Now, would you ever do direct uh, uh, abdominal work? You know why I wouldn't do direct? So I would, so I don't, whether you have diastasis recti or not, um, I don't have pregnant women do direct ab work right off the bat until we get their transverse abdominus to get stronger, their TVA. Because I would imagine that's uh, a lot of women uh, right after having a child are very disconnected the ability to even activate that so like even just like a basic drawn maneuver or mm-hmm. like belly breathing or like a press your back against the wall type mm-hmm. exercise these I, they sound Dude, boring all, and simple but you're a lot of the problems that happen like weak pelvic floor muscles you know weak uh, core muscles these are all a result of disconnecting from these muscles because you just had a baby so when when i had trained post pregnancy when i tra- train women post pregnancy i have them work on stabilizing before I ever do like full action exercises. Mm-hmm. Now, don't get me wrong, working the abs will activate the TVA if you're doing it right to some extent, but I focus mainly on vacuum exercises, mm-hmm. uh, what are called vacuum exercises. We actually have a video, it's actually one of our more popular videos on our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV, and you can look it up, and I'm not quite sure what the title is, maybe Doug can look it up while I'm talking here, but I actually demo what a vacuum exercise is and that will help quite a bit with this particular problem but you see this in uh some pro bodybuilders because their growth their 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 guts grow so much from the growth hormone that actually pushes pushes out the abs and causes this and sometimes a lot of times you see this in babies or in children because children's bodies don't match the size of their organs which is why babies will look like they have these little buddha bellies Mm -hmm. and it pushes out the abs and sometimes you'll see your little if your little if your child is on their back and they cry or they cough or whatever, and they squeeze their abs, you'll see that little, that poking, or that, you know, that kind of tension. This is now where I, I could see, um, you know, we've talked on the show before about we, we knocked on, um, you know, the functional training kick, right? And how it went crazy with like balancing on everything and stability ball, everything. This is where I think there it, uh, it has some validity to it. Oh, is a lot of validity. You've got somebody who has does not connect very well to their transverse abdominis. So just the ability to draw their core in, hold themselves in good posture while they balance doing something actually would be really good for them. So a client like this, I would probably do a lot of exercises – uh, on like a stability ball. So I would do like, if let's say like, let's say they're following our maps program and our maps program calls for a chest press. I would actually modify that for this client and I would put them on a stability ball and actually have them bridge up and hold just them holding themselves in a bridge on the stability ball while they're doing like a chest press would be a great exercise. To stabilize. Yeah, you do a lot of them in the quadruped position as well. Quadruped's my favorite. So I was just going to say that. Yeah, you do like a, yeah, opposite arm and leg raise and you would do like cat cow and you know, all these different positions where they could like hold themselves pretty easily, but they're really focused on trying to recon- reconnect to the, to the TVA. Well, this is, these are, those are all direct TVA and, and core movements, which I think that's a no brainer, right? A, a bulk of your to build on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. A, yeah. a bulk of your exercises. Cause I know that this was part of her question. Like she wants to like, can I still lift weights and be normal? Like, yeah, absolutely. I think you can still mm-hmm. train you exercise. You can, but you got to stabilize. First. Yes. You your your core, your first. core is becomes the foundation of your program, right? So all, and we have a whole series on the, YouTube channel. You can go to under core exercises on our YouTube channel, and there's all these uh, core uh, movements and exercises that you can follow. Yeah, so, the one that I was talking about it's actually titled "Shrink Your Waist with Stomach Vacuums." Just so if you want to see what it looks like. Yeah, and and that falls under the playlist category too. Like I believe Doug has made a playlist that is actually around the core. Dougbeats.com. So I so the foundation of my training for this client would definitely be obviously based around core exercises, all those basic, but. 
if this person is still, you know, hey, I want to still have good arms and shoulders and I still want to train my legs, can I still do that even though I have this issue? Yes, And but the types of movements I would do would be examples. Like I would do things like a single leg toe touch with them. I would be doing like standing on one leg and doing bicep curls or a shoulder. Doing a lot of movement or on a stability ball and doing a chest press, almost every exercise would the core would be the priority so I, I would prioritize it by well incorporating a stability ball or balancing and having them tighten up their core and hold their posture so right. so some of my favorite movements for um stabilization of the core because when you're looking at um post-pregnancy the core represents all the muscles that surround your midsection and there's a back side of your core which is your posterior chain area and there's the front side and the sides right your your lateral sides where women lose a lot of their stability and where they become underactive is in the front and the sides. So they lose a lot of the ability to rotate. They lose a lot of the lateral stability and the front stability. Their posterior chain tends to be overactive because they're carrying this front-loaded right. belly. So, you know, physio ball stuff is are, are good, but that's a lot of posterior activation, right? So one of the things I like to do post-pregnancy is standing cable or band exercise like a standing chest press where they're having to resist the weight pulling back and the way I'm having them resist it is by doing a slight mm. posterior pelvic tilt so what I'll do is I'll tell a woman focus on the eccentric yeah so. I'll say oh, see, I'll say I, I would do that tailbone a little I bit. would do that exact same movement sitting upright on a stability or ball that. and I would have them act I'd be able to activate exactly. their pelvic like that way and then they would do a chest fly it, exactly to me stability ball stabilization mm. stuff split stances yeah all this, split all, stance this, or even even modify planks are great for this you just got to modify them especially a side plank yeah you got to modify the plank so I'll have them do it off their knees or up on a block so it's a lot easier again I think I taught this on the YouTube channel I think I did a regression to the, yeah, I think I did a, a side plank with the regression onto your knees or whatever. But, you know, this is an example where, and this is also why, too, I don't like to. Go to our YouTube channel, to, basically. I don't like to knock people that are doing exercises in the gym because you don't know that, right? Like, it, like I think we've talked about this on the show where I bet somebody, and I've seen this before because people have taken pictures and sent it over to me making fun of somebody doing like a silly exercise that, hey, maybe you, if you, maybe we don't mm. know that this person, uh, that's their primary goal. They don't. They're not trying to build the most amount of muscle on their shoulders. So the fact that they're balancing on one leg doing a shoulder press may seem silly to you, but for this person, because her core is the number one priority, mm -hmm. and she's not going to build a bunch of shoulder muscle that way. And I and we're trying to find a way to activate that in every way we possibly can. That does have some so, validity to it. So real quick, the reason why I typically don't have them do direct ab work right off the bat is when you're doing direct ab, you know, abs. Your abs really have these kind of two major attachments at the pelvis and the rib cage. And when they contract, they straighten out. And they actually push out a little bit. And that's the last thing you want to do when you have this particular condition. You want to actually pull in. So you can do crunches and stuff, but when you do them, focus on drawing in while you do the crunch. This can be very difficult for you right off the bat, though. So uh, that's why I do vacuums, you know, mm. vacuums and quadruped and stabilization learn how to draw in, activate those muscles. Then when you do your core exercises, you're not trying to push out and causing things so to the, get worse. So the, the cue to that that I give for that when, is I put them on their back in the crunch position. Before they crunch, I say squish the bug, then crunch. So that will help what them. What the hell? Yeah, squish. Like if you pretend like you have the... It, when everyone lays down, you're going to have a natural arch in your low back. Oh, so that one. You'll have a slight gap squish there. Bug, so I, I, tell, I tell clients, pretend like there's a bug and you're trying to squash the bug with your low back. Oh, yeah. That them that cue will cue them to activate their core to press press down. That part of the movement is more important than the actual crunch for that client. So I just pretend to punch him. That in fact wow. that that can be an exercise Please. in itself. Is the back press or what are called back presses? Is sitting there back press release back press release. And then if you want to progress That's it a great to, exercise. to the to the crunch, you back press to a slight crunch, back press to a slight, and that's how you would progress the back press. Next up is from. Aaron C. Mansfield. He would love to hear Sal's thoughts oh. on the carnivore diet. Oh, Fuck Sal. Sal. <laughs> um, that means you guys don't get to give your opinion. Just kidding. I, mm. So, you know what's funny? So I looked this up. So I never, hilarious. When people I'd never heard of the carnivore <laughs> diet, so I looked it up. And, I, you know, it sounds like, it is what it sounds like. It's a all meat, all animal product diet devoid of vegetables and fruit. And it sounds crazy. It, it does sound very, very crazy. And it is Especially in modern times, I think it is uh, extreme and crazy, and I don't recommend it. But here's what's interesting. If you look at ancient uh, cultures and civilizations, you will not find a 
a pure vegan uh, society. But you will find societies that are carnivore, pure mm. carnivore. The Inuits uh, mm-hmm. who live in the very, very cold climates uh, around very Alaska fat, and the North. fat diet, too. They, they are, don't have access to uh, vegetables and fruits um, for long periods of time, sometimes for the entire year. And their diet uh, is completely revolved around, you know, caribou, seal meat and fat, and, you know, uh, walrus meat and fat, and whale. It's all animal product. Now, the, and they call it the Inuit paradox. You can actually look this up. There's been a few articles on it. And the reason why they call it a paradox is because their diets are very, very high in fat and protein, mostly fat, no vegetables, no fruit, and they are they have excellent health. Excellent health. Compared to- what? Compared to Western uh, societies, they have very, very he- excellent health. And of course, when they start to adopt the the way we eat with grains and stuff like that, their health goes down. <laughs> I think I think any diet compared to the American diet that's not a bad will, point will show positive yeah. markers. Yeah. I literally, well, I, I literally think you could take any diet that's out there, compare it to the American diet, and well, they're you can, killing their meat. Well, there's a huge difference. Well, there's that, but there's also context. Context is very important. So. In the presence of lots of sugar and carbohydrates, high fat, high protein might not be good. Remember, these people have zero of those things. So uh, they're, in that context, it may actually be okay for the body. Here's something else that's interesting. Uh, the Inuit diet is not devoid of any nutrients. Mm-hmm. So they get everything. And I know vegans out there are like, oh, vitamin C. What about vitamin C? Well, vitamin C, they actually have adequate amounts, not tons, but adequate amounts in like seal skin and walrus skin and stuff like that, which, by the way, they eat everything. They're not just eating the lean part of the meat. Yeah. And, uh, they eat everything. Another, Organs, another, everything. And, and I mean, uh, trappers, you know, uh, trappers that used to uh, that survive off of just what they caught and killed, many times will survive just off of meat, and, but uh, some of them would, go, would get sick and die when all they had to eat was rabbit meat that was too lean. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And it's not a protein diet. It's a very high-fat diet. You need to have yeah. fat. Not devoid of nutrients. Now, that being said, uh, I don't recommend it at all for anybody because there's so many benefits to eating fruits and vegetables. It's also a nice variety. It's also going to provide a variety for your gut. Now, that all being said, at some point in human history, people went carnivore or went vegan, not out of choice, where they don't live in the modern times where they have this wonderful you know, choice where they could choose to, to cut all kinds of foods out. People went uh, vegan or went carnivore out of necessity. Yeah. And this probably happened year, all, every year. You know, there were, it's snowing during the snow when you it's know, cold cyclical. as fuck. You ain't going to find naturally growing vegetables and fruit, uh, but you're going to find animals you can kill. And then on the flip side, it, during the summer months or the spring months, uh, it's way, if you run into a field of naturally growing fruit or roots or vegetables, it requires less effort, less energy, and it's safer to gather and eat those things than to kill animals. Killing animals and hunting them required lots of skill, lots of energy and hunting. So the odds are if we were surrounded by foods that we could forage, we probably ate that. And then when that was gone, we probably only ate meat. So, Which it also is probably why it makes a lot of sense why you can take a little bit of information or science on just one of those things and provide just live there. why it was positive. Yeah. I mean, it's. I think the real answer, I think there's, I think it would be good to do it every once in a while. It might be. Yeah. You're, you're right. It yeah. might be a good idea. I mean, you talk a lot about Going how you like to sometimes. do a, a vegan day uh-huh. out of nowhere, and you've turned me on to doing that, and I've incorporated that for quite some time now. I love the benefits that I feel from it. I feel great from it. So, you know, shit, maybe I'll have a day now where all I do is literally eat meat for an entire day. You know, like, yeah. it I, could I, don't, be. I don't think it'd be great to do it all the time, but. It could be. You just want to be careful that then you don't. Leonardo DiCaprio will cry. Yeah, you just be careful you don't eat, overeat, I guess, protein. I don't know. I mean, the, the meat that we tend to eat now tends to be lean, chicken breast and, you know, sirloin steak and stuff like that. And the meat that these traditional cultures eat was not lean. They ate lots of organ meat. So, uh, when I say that you know animal products are rich in nutrients, it's mostly the organ meats. Mm-hmm. It's not just the like cuts of meat that we eat. So, for those of you listening right now that love oh, meat, it's important to, to point that out though because like some people will like be attracted to that idea and then then they're just gonna eat burgers and hot dogs. Yeah, bullshit. You know like I, mean? I guarantee you, so, people who love uh, meat, no, it's not how you do. Don't it. eat liver and heart and kidney and eyeballs and brains and all. And you know yeah. they're not eating sinew and tendons and you know you better believe. 
that that's that those are all things that they ate and they didn't leave a, a damn thing and then they used the bones for you know for for structures and they used the furs for clothes so yeah but here's this is interesting now uh the likelihood that uh, so if you if you go back to hunter gatherer times um could people subsist and survive on just eating meat yeah could they subsist and survive on just eating what they found naturally growing around them highly unlikely that's that's an unfortunate fact like Today, to be a pure vegan, you can do it and you can be very healthy. But the reason why you can do it is because you go to the grocery store and you have a well, wide they've variety. Hacked through, yeah, they've hacked through all seasons. Like yeah. you can have everything from every season all year round. Dude, go that's in, never existed. Go in nature. Go in, in some place where shit isn't. You know, there's no agricultural revolution. There's no like we're not planting anything. Hunter gatherers didn't even know that yet. Walk around and see what you can eat that's growing naturally. Gather that, do your little nutrient and calorie, and and I guarantee you, you'll be not just low in stuff. You'll be so low that you'll die. Like you won't have certain nutrients, so you'll die. There'll be certain. You'll be so low in calories. You ever you guys ever watch that show on on Discovery, uh, Naked and Afraid? Yeah. You, you ever you ever see the vegans on that show? <laughs> it, um, yeah. Oh, it's hilarious. They, they don't do well. No, they have to eat meat. They end yeah. up eating meat. They yeah. have to. Yeah. Because that's just so. Just I'm not making, by the way, I'm, the process. I'm not making a case for carnivore diet. Um, I'm just saying that uh, I don't recommend. I don't think it's a good diet to go mm-hmm. on. But it has. Are there examples of healthy societies that have eaten kind of this way? There definitely are. <laughs> Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Tunicat215. What's the best way to correct rounded shoulders, especially when you have large breasts? Mm, you're going to have to send us a... What, I mean, really, the only way we know is... <laughs> well, tuna cat. Yeah, um, let's see your... <laughs> um, this is actually a really good question, and I think... Uh, I, I, I can't this rem- is a problem that, that women with large breasts have. Well, this is it's quite not, common. It's not just a problem, though, with large well, breasts. Go funny this, is, page. this is a huge problem with our just general population. Yeah. I mean, almost everybody suffers from a, from slight rounded shoulders. Right. This uh, just exaggerates it. Yeah, exactly. It's, this it's, on top of it, you got weight in front yeah, of it. Yeah, so I, I want to make that clear. I, I, I think that, uh, God, at least 80% of all clients I've ever trained I've had to do some sort of uh, corrective work for upper cross syndrome, which is the forward head rounded shoulders. Mm-hmm. And that's just, I mean, and it's only getting worse because we spend more and more time either driving in our cars or sitting on a computer than we ever did. So what I was even seeing 10, 15 years ago, it's even worse now today. Because you see of, kids with this really bad. Right, mouth. exactly. Mm-hmm. You now see kids. You did not see this before because no. kids are they're now- on their phone. Just yes, they're the hunched list. over on their laptops, which they, that didn't exist 20 years ago, right? 20 years ago, kids, uh, a 10-year-old kid didn't have a laptop. That was yeah, unheard they looked of. you in the eyes. Right, yeah. yeah. And they, or they were, they, were, <laughs> now they're just, they were playing outside, not playing, uh, you know, what's that, warfare game or whatever. That, Minecraft. That, yeah, now they're playing these games for four or five hours at a time. And we're starting to shape their bodies different. So this is, not only has it a major, been a major issue for the 15 years I've been a trainer, it's getting worse. And this is stuff, this is also why we think that Prime was so revolutionary because we know for sure it's already a big deal. It's only getting worse. And so the the basis of Prime is to help these exact conditions, yeah. mm-hmm. is to help you assess your imbalances like upper cross syndrome and know what movements help that. Now, there are some unique, uh, there is a unique, a little bit of a uniqueness here with, with women who have large breasts and why their shoulders are rounded. Part of it is the weight of the breasts, and it might not seem like a lot, but over the whole day, especially when you have weakness there. Would you say part of it, too, is like the insecurity? Of part of it's the insecurity, yeah. yeah. Right. So Having boobs and they probably round Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I tell you what, I, I remember I had a client who had um, mm-hmm. uh, breast reduction surgery, and we had this whole conversation, and she was talking about how the weight of her boobs hurt her back, this and that. And then I brought this part up, and I said, well, were you really, did you develop really early? And she says, yeah, I was real young when I first got them. And I said, did, were you self-conscious? She's like, definitely. Like, men looked at me because they assumed I was older, and, you know, and I really felt for her. And she said, and I asked her, I said, do you think part of your forward shoulder was you trying to hide 
mm-hmm. your your breasts? And she's like, absolutely. And women, even now, if you tell them to stand up straight, some of them will even instinctually be like, ooh, I'm sticking my boobs out. I don't want to yeah. do that. And I've even had women tell me when I'm telling them to pull their shoulders back on a, on a row. Oh, they always I've even say, had some women that are like, oh, who does she think she is when they're like in good posture position? Yeah. You know, oh. and it's like. It's funny. It's, it's funny. Like, what are you talking about? I, I'll take a client and I'll put their shoulders into good position. Like, oh, you want me to stick my boobs yeah, out? Yeah, and girls say that all the time to me. They'll be, they would be like, boobs I'm not going to walk around sticking up. my boobs yeah. out. I'm like, well, that's what they're supposed to look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to look like that when you walk it's around with good, blessing. <laughs> with good Yeah, with good posture. But for so many years, we've had people knock them it's for definitely doing it's definitely a, a issue that's probably historically been more common with women because of uh, breasts because of what we just talked about uh because of uh breastfeeding where they were holding a child in front of them mm-hmm. uh you also see uh, women will have hip dysfunction a lot of times when they have a baby because they'll carry a baby on one side of their hip and here's some exercise very basic uh exercises but the key isn't the exercise the key isn't the intention and how you do it so all rows, any kind of a row is going to help with uh, rounded shoulders. I recommend, especially if you have really bad rounded shoulder posture, to do a sitting up row, not to do a bent over row. Because bent over oh, rows requires a, yeah. a, a whole nother level of connection to be able to pull the shoulders You can back. still row with forward shoulders. And yes, so this that's is it. Where, yeah. Well, yeah, It's all about the careful. intention. And if you have forward shoulders and you're not like... You know, been training for a long time. A bent over row will probably just make it worse. You're, it is. You'll end up. You'll probably doing biceps the whole time. And biceps it, and lats, and you'll strengthen the imbalance. So yeah. here's what I do for people when I'm training them to do these on their own. Because when I'm in front of someone, it's not a problem. I can put my hands on the shoulders. I can squeeze them back. I can do all these different things. So number one, when you're doing a row, a seated row, you want to focus on pinching the shoulder blades back, but also bring them down. So it's not backing up. It's backing down. Okay. So it's called retraction and depression. But before you do that, what I'll do is I'll take a half foam roller, or if you don't have access to one of those, get a big bath towel and roll it up so that it's a big, long tube. Lay down on the floor with it, with it running down on top of this towel so that it's along the, the length of your spine. So it's in between your shoulder blades going down your spine. Place your palms up with your arms at your sides and allow your shoulders to naturally fall down around the towel. Oh and then God. I want you to focus on pulling them down and back in that position. So activate those muscles. It's kind of a primer. Co- activate those muscles and then go do your row and you'll be able to activate those muscles. Coaching that on the podcast is ridiculous. Doug, we have to shoot this video. We got to shoot this video. This would be a great video. Yeah, it would be a great this video. Would be, this is a great topic. I think many, many people uh, can benefit from this. I've got a ton of movements in my arsenal that I've given to people. I'm sure these guys have too. We'll shoot a series. This has got to be a series. I think this is a great series that will help a ton so of people. So who's going to be the afflicted one with the big breasts? Uh, you. You. I knew it. Yeah. You got the biggest ones. <laughs> I knew it. Between the two. <laughs> Always. Of them. Yeah. We actually have the costume, I believe. Yeah. I so, know. Did, uh, here's the other thing, too. When you're doing an exercise to correct an imbalance versus doing an exercise to build muscle, very different in terms of the amount of weight you're going to use. Right. You're going to go way lighter than you think you can. So, in other words, uh, you're going to grab a weight and you're like, oh, that's too light. Nope, that's what you need to use because... You're trying to connect to these muscles, which means you got to go really light. The second you go anywhere near heavy, your body's going to revert back to its original patterning, and you're going to strengthen the imbalance. This reminds me of the YouTube uh, video that you and I just uh, recorded. Movement on, versus muscle. Yeah, movement versus muscle. And this is an example of you know getting caught up in just the movement and getting heavier and heavier weight would end up not really helping this person where mm-hmm. going a really light and really concentrating on what muscles you're supposed to be at. And again, this is what Prime was all about. But even if you're not going to do Prime, we're going to we're gonna make a video series for you for free, put it on YouTube so everybody can benefit from it. But this is what motivated us to create Prime. And this person would greatly benefit from implementing Prime into their routine for sure. Perfect. So uh, if you haven't already, go to YouTube, look up Mind Pump TV, TV, subscribe to the channel. Here's what happens when you subscribe. And share it with all your friends with rounded shoulders. You will get uh, notified when we post a new video. Uh, You'll get a notification. And we do post a new video every single day. And at some point, we'll be posting even more than that. So you do want to get those notifications. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we answer on these episodes, the place to do it is on Instagram. Our page is Mind Pump Media. Now, we all have our own personal Instagram pages, and all of us provide different kinds of fitness and wellness information. My page is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Justin is Mind Pump Justin. And Doug, Doug's got a page too. It's called Mind Pump Doug. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, 
and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>